It's 8 p.m. Do you know where your retro console mounting news is? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Let's start off with some Pixel FX news. This was actually announced last week, but the Pixel FX Twitter shared that there's an update to the morph menu. So the Pixel FX morph is a scaler that's gonna come out sometime next year from the Pixel FX guys. But anyways, they shared this interesting menu update that brings color to the menu. Not entirely exciting by itself, but if you look here at the slot mask creator, slot mask, if you didn't know, is sort of a recreation of how a CRT generates the different colors in a CRT. That's kind of where the scan lines come from. It looks like you should be able to place the different colors wherever you want them. So obviously having a color menu helps to lay out the slot mask if you want to create your own. So that's pretty exciting. And I'm looking forward to however else they can use color in their menus. And actually just recently, there was some more morph menu news. There's actually a couple of updates so let's go through these different posts. This first one is showing off these different folders for the menus so like the scan lines and slot masks can all be organized into different folders. So that's an interesting way to organize the different presets in the menu. Then they mentioned that there's different pixel correction options. I guess you can actually change the shape of a pixel so you can make it square if you want really square pixels or you can make them a little bit wider if you want them to be like a CRT. Next, it looks like the slot masks are gonna be compatible across all the Pixel Effects products and the Mister project. So you should be able to create slot masks in one or the other, either a Pixel Effects product or Mister, and swap them back and forth. That too is awesome, and like they say here, you know, standard formats just benefit everyone. Looks like all these features can be previewed today in the N64 digital test firmware. Here's some exciting Blue Retro news. Darth Cloud tweeted today that Blue Retro 1.2 actually adds N64 controller pack support to Blue Retro. You can check out this video here, but in short, you can actually emulate a controller pack for each of the Blue Retro's controller inputs. You can have up to four controller packs emulated. So you can have different data stored on different controllers. One of the things that I thought was cool is you can actually use the Blue Retro.io configuration to grab the N64 controller pack files over the web interface. So you should be able to pull files off of the controller packs over the web interface. I don't know a lot of the background for the Saturn Mr. Core, but it seems like there was some progress made and some new games are now playable. Again, I don't know much about the things that are being talked about here, but it sounds like there's some good progress being made in this core. So it's really cool to have now both PS1 and Saturn kind of Mr. Cores in progress. From the video here, it looks like there's a lot of 2D games or just FMV graphics. So I'm not sure if 3D is in progress or anything, but still it's pretty exciting that there's updates for the Saturn core. IFIX Retro pointed out that there seems to be a fix to use a GDMU now with the VA0 Sega Dreamcast. GDMU is an ODE for the Dreamcast and it seems like it was only compatible with a VA1 Sega Dreamcast. And if we go over to the GDMU WordPress blog, there is a description about why it's not compatible with these other versions of the Dreamcast. Long story short, it looks like the other versions of the Dreamcast have a five volt bus where the GDMU actually uses just 3.3 volts. It looks like the GDMU should only be powered by 3.3 volts, and if you power it with more than that, like the five volts from the version zero or the 2.1, you could have things like game hangs and resets to the sound being slow or the wrong pitch. So anyways, the actual fix is to replace some resistor arrays on the VA0 motherboard with some higher value resistors. This changes the voltage drop in that certain section to be able to power the GDMU by only using using 3.3 volts. So that's pretty exciting. And I'll leave a link here to this obscure gamers forum post where you can actually see this being done and how to do it yourself. Okay, I don't really wanna spoil anything, but I'm going to be working on the new 3DS XL capture mod from Optimize shortly. And I just found out about this Raspberry Pi TV out thing that you can use with that capture mod. You can actually see it in action in this older My Life in Gaming video, where you plug in the new 3DS capture mod into a Raspberry Pi, and then you can use the HDMI out on the Raspberry Pi to connect it directly to a TV. So this allows you to kind of not even need a computer setup. Well, I guess the Raspberry Pi is a computer, but you will be able to display what's on the 3DS on your TV. I'm gonna be going into more detail in my capture mod video, but I think this is a cool project that more people should know about. Also shout out to Ruby Otaku, who actually has a GBA temp post here about how to create one of these TV out Raspberry Pi kits. You can hop into their Discord and get some information about how to set one up yourself. Lastly, we have some new information about a new OSSC version, as well as something called the OSSC Pro Lite. 
There's a post here on Shmup's forums from Gunstar that talks about both of those things. So first let's talk about the OSSC 1.7 new features. It looks like it's going to be coming with Todd Gill or Retrofrog's OSSC case that he 3D printed, but this time it's actually going to be injection molded. And somebody actually asked too if it's going to be backwards compatible with the other OSSCs, and they said it would be. So if you want to get an injection molded case, you might be able to get one now for your older OSSC. Next it looks like they have some over voltage protection, which they say is the number one cause of damage to OSSCs. So that's pretty interesting that it makes your OSSC a little bit safer and a little bit more idiot proof, I guess. An improved audio switch and reduced power consumption and heat. So it sounds like this OSSC version is gonna be more efficient than the older versions. They said that the OSSC 1.7 should be in stock this Christmas, which is obviously this month. So it's cool that they're coming out with this so quickly. And it sounds like it's only gonna be about 10 or 20 euros. So maybe about 15 to $30 or so more expensive than the older versions. But to me, the other more interesting announcement is this OSSC DEXX VD underscore ISL or what they're calling the an OSSC Pro Lite. Looks like it's a little expansion board for the DE10 Nano or the board that the Mister uses to make it a powerful video digitizer. I'm guessing that's another word for scaler. For video inputs, it looks like it will take RGBS, RGB C-Sync, well, TTL voltage, RGB HV, and YPBPR formats, up to a 100 megahertz sampling clock, or what they think might be 1920 by 1440, which is not true 1440 widescreen, but it should be 1440p in four by three. Adaptive line multiplication, I'm not really sure what that means. Maybe it can change very quickly between different line doubling modes to get one that works for your display. Line 6x, which for 240p will be that 1440p four by three mode. Line 3x for 40p sources, so anything like a PS2 or 40p Xbox, you'll be able to get that 1440p line tripled, which is pretty cool. And best of all, it sounds like that little adapter is gonna be under 50 US dollars, so that could be really Really huge. I mean, granted, a DE10 Nano is not the cheapest thing in the world. How cheap is a DE10 Nano right now? It sounds like it might be about $200. So for about $250, you should have something that they're calling an OSCC Pro Lite. But with the features listed here and not knowing about any of the other features about scan lines or anything, this puts this squarely into RetroTINK 5X Pro territory. So let me know if you guys are interested in me checking out this OSCC Pro Lite project to see how it compares against the RetroTINK 5X Pro and if it's worth getting over the normal OSCC OSSC or the RetroTank 5X Pro. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, you can follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.